Hey, you're here with Gridiron Football. We're at Media Day 2024. I'm here with Coach Lockhart, man, Lafayette Christian High School. Um, Coach, how you doing? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Good, good. Coach, Coach, how long have you um, been at Lafayette Christian? Uh, this is my first, first year. year. How long uh, have you been there? I got uh, hired in about uh, March, uh, late February, somewhere in there. Okay. So you did uh, have, have spring with them? Yes, yes. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't elect to, to have the spring days. You know, uh, you have to choose whether you use your ten days Correct. in the spring or the fall. So we elected to use it in the fall. But uh, we were able to do some player-led uh, workouts and get some good work done. You know, during our workouts throughout the spring, leading uh, through the summer so far. So. Uh, we've, we've covered a lot of ground and uh, gotten better certainly uh, in the spring and summer so far. Right, uh, tell us about some of the things y'all been doing this, this summer to you know to get prepared for the season. Sure, sure. We uh, we go four days a week. Um, we go Monday through Thursday, eight to eleven. They get there. Uh, they lift for 45 minutes. They run for 45 minutes. They flop. We go to a, a meeting, special teams meeting every day. We'll go to a, a, a unit and position meetings after that. And then we'll go hit the field and uh, we'll do individual. We will do uh, inside run, um, team run, seven on seven, team, uh, pass rush. Uh, every day, so we get in some, some some really good work and finish with some competitive uh, situations. And also uh, on Tuesdays we host uh, seven on seven, so we've had some great uh, great competition. Not only uh, seven on seven, you know we've had uh, Opelousas and Lafayette High School uh, and uh, Como. Uh, just some of the teams that have come through. We competed in the um, Louisiana at Lafayette uh, seven on seven tournament. Uh, um, did some good things there, and then we get some uh, O-line, D-line work as well on our right. Tuesday uh, co uh, competitive days. Oh, so y'all done um, O-line, D-line against other schools? Yeah, you know, so we'll, um, on days that we host the seven-on-seven seven, uh, work, we'll bring the, uh, the bigs and uh, we'll, they'll do some pass rush uh, type stuff against each other. Yeah, I talked to the coach and I'm not saying that they're not doing it. You're the first one to mention the O-line, D-line. People are talking seven-on-seven. Seven. Hey, of, man, that's... A lot of skill work. Yeah, nobody, that, that, that's where yeah, championship... Line, line, yes, right. sir, that's where championships are won. That's where I've been, you know, since... Uh, I got hired at UL Lafayette in 2011. I've worked with offensive line, defensive line, uh, primarily out at all my stops, and that's where I really have a passion for, and uh, being around the trenches and those big boys up front. Good deal. Um, you know, being out at Woodlawn, you know, I played against the Lafayette Christian last couple of years, and yes. I know they had some big time guys, and I, I, I know some of those guys have left. Tell us about some of the key players that, that you've seen since you've been there that, that you guys will be counting on. Sure, absolutely. Well, we got three of them here today. We've got um, Calvin Parker. Uh, Calvin Parker is uh, an explosive playmaker offensively. Uh, he, as a slot receiver, as a running back, you get the ball in his hands. Uh, he is just lightning fast, a dynamic, intelligent. A uh, young man, and he's uh, a, a team leader as well. So, you know, we're playing him on both sides of the ball uh, as well, playing him at safety, playing him at some outside linebacker type stuff. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, can play both ways the whole game because he, uh, you know, is in, in incredible shape and he's incredibly smart. He's a great leader. He's somebody who brings the level of uh, play up of everybody around him. Um, got Jalen Noel here, one of the best running backs uh, in the state. Uh, he is uh, absolutely explosive with the ball in his hand. Uh, he, he has some of the best hands of any um, running back that I've ever coached uh, in the high school or college game. So we can line him up and empty. We can throw him the ball out of the backfield, run him up the pipe on vertical routes. Um, He's extremely dangerous, uh, explosive playmaker, and another one who's unselfish and willing if he has to go play some linebacker on the other side of the ball or whatever it takes. These guys are team first guy, uh, type guys. And also with me today, I have Brandon Walker, one of the best receivers in the state. Uh, he had over 1,200 yards um, receiving, um, and he uh, he has goals of, uh, of really um, – breaking out this year and being one of the um, most productive receivers in the state. Another great kid also plays on the defensive side of the ball when we need him to. Can easily uh, has the skill set and athleticism to uh, 
to go cover a guy, lock him down one on one or what have you. Uh, and those are just uh, just three, but we've got a, a, a great senior class. We've got um, a, a lot of underclassmen as well, and I really feel blessed that you know we have some of the best players of anywhere around uh, this this uh, area of the state. Okay, um, we talk about the scheme that we're going to be seeing offensively, defense. I know over the past they've been um, mainly all front on defense, and they've been pretty spread out. You know, they had Juju back there, and they just kind of spread out, and then just kind of make plays with the arm and leg. So what's something we we'll see from um, from LCA this year? Sure, sure. Well, um, offensively, you know, my background at when I was at. Uh, Bro Bridge and, and Patterson, we were a lot of pro uh, pro sets, I backfield, heavy running game. Um, you know, uh, now LCA over the past seven years, seven years in a row, been to the state championship, won four of those state championships, primarily out of the spread. You know, you got some elements with some per, uh, tight end. Uh, sets or things like that, uh, two back sets. Um, so we want to be multiple. Um, I know that's kind of coach talk a little bit, but you know we're we're um, you know meeting as coaches every day, implementing schemes uh, to try to take advantage of uh, the personnel that we do have. Uh, you know we've got the ability, uh, dependent uh, week to week on our opponent. Uh, you know, to spread you out and beat you with our speed, or uh, if um, you know, uh, if nece uh, necessary, you know, get big and uh, pound it physically in the run. And we want to do a combination of both, uh, but we definitely want to continue the history of LCA being a really explosive offense, an offense that any week can score 60 or 70 points. Uh, so uh, we definitely uh, want to continue with that. And then, uh, and then defensively, yeah. We've got some some odd front uh, personnel stuff. We've got some four down personnel uh, stuff. We're definitely multiple, uh, but we're going to be a very pressure oriented, um, you know, uh, 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 very tight, aggressive, um, you know, challenging front. And that's also kind of historically been LCA's mantra. You know, they've played a lot of tight press, man to man over this uh, successful seven year run. Uh, you know, so we want to be versatile enough. Uh, to, to give you different looks, different fronts, different coverages, different stunts and blitzes, um, but but you know not being that kind of oh let's uh, let's be soft and let you uh, let you set the tempo. You know we want to set the tempo defensively, and um, you know I really believe defense wins championships. So we're putting a lot of effort and resources uh, into you know the, the teaching of our, our personnel and uh, you know the maximizing of our schemes to put these guys in possession of uh, position to be successful. That is, uh, I know one of the big questions everybody want to ask, I mean, have you named a, a, a new trigger man yet that's going to be behind the center? Absolutely, yeah. Um, that one was an easy one. Uh, you know, uh, after Jawan last year, um, you know, had the, the uh, best statistical um, season a quarterback's ever had in, in Louisiana history. Um, everybody knew who was uh, waiting, and, and Braylon, Braylon Walker is the guy. He is one of the most valuable weapons that uh, that I've ever had on any of my teams I've ever coached. Uh, he is a student of the game. You know, the first day I, I met with them, I'm asking him, what do you like against cover four, cover three, cover two, cover one, cover zero? And he, he could recite it off the top of his hand. He knows the game. More importantly, he's a leader. He's never missed. He's never been uh, late. Uh, he's never one to have a bad attitude. He's always pushing the guys around him. He's got a phenomenal arm. Uh, he is uh, one of the most athletic quarterbacks I've ever been around. Uh, you could have him in a phone booth and uh, he can escape six guys on you. Uh, but more importantly, you know, he's a Christian. He is a uh, he is a strong leader and a strong character uh, young man. And um, we're so blessed to have him the next two years. Oh, yeah. so, so he'll be a junior? Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's the that we're going to be definitely having to look out for there. Mm -hmm. Coach, tell me about the schedule. Did you have a chance or did you have part in making the, the new cycle schedule for this year right now? I know you said you got it around March. Uh, no. Nope. was it already set? It was already set. Um, our uh, assistant head coach, Matt Standiford, he goes by Coach Chop. Uh, he does a phenomenal job. He already uh, uh, had set the schedule. So um, we uh, are on the road six out of the ten weeks, but we open up uh, at Archbishop Rummel okay. uh, in the Canes Kickoff Classic. It's in uh, uh, in New Orleans. And, and then Jamboree that week one. 
It's week one, okay. yep. So um, we have St. Martinville as our fall scrimmage, and then Lake Charles Prep is our jamboree this year. And then we uh, open up in the Canes Classic against Rummel. Uh, we host Karen Crow week two at home. We go to Westgate. Uh, we host Archbishop Shaw week four. We go to Central of Baton Rouge. We go to uh, Lafayette Renaissance Charter Academy. We host Notre Dame. Uh, we host Welsh. Uh, we go to Evangel, and then um, we go to Lake Arthur. So that's our schedule for this year. Now I'm hearing this, this no additional schedule. I mean, that's probably one of the toughest you can ask for. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's it's exactly. Central is no, yeah, know, very physical. Over there. They, they're physical. They got yeah, great, great running board. attack. All of these teams, right. um, and that's exactly what we want. If you're going to be the best, you got to beat the best. And so we look at this as ten opportunities that we have to show the state of Louisiana, um, you know, who we are, uh, and, and it's still us, and, you know, that's our mantra, you know, it's always been about us, you know, and um, you got a lot of crowd noise and people saying th this and that, but in our locker room and with, within our team, that's all we're focused on, and we are thrilled about uh, the, the um, rigor of this schedule, and we really feel that it'll help us as we, um, as we head through the playoffs uh, all the way to the Superdome for the state championship. Okay, well, tell me about the ad man, tell me about the, the support you guys got here, you know, you know, principal, assistant principal, you know, teacher, staff, you know, stuff like that. Absolutely, it's phenomenal. I'm so blessed. Starting with uh, Pastor Jay Miller, you know, he uh, is, the, uh, is the preacher and head of the family church, and the family church uh, has Lafayette Christian Academy, so uh, he was in on my interview, and he's just been a blessing to me um, first as a spiritual mentor and as my pastor and um, as a leader of all of this you know he started his own TV station so we've got our own TV station uh, this year and um, you know it's about producing champions in, in all sports uh, in all walks of life uh, I'm just so blessed Superintendent they, uh, um, Mr. Launche is, uh, is is phenomenal. He's a, a former coach. You know, he was a girls basketball coach. They won the state championship. Uh, he gets it as far as athletics. He's a tremendous leader. Uh, Mr. Devin Launche and our um, and our principal, Miss Cook, uh, is is phenomenal as well. You know, I work uh, hand in hand with her and our faculty, and so it's just a, a real blessing to be in a, a Christian atmosphere with such high caliber athletics and athletes. And students. Yep. Um, you give me a little something about the com community around there. I know it's more of a private school, but um, what's the culture like? I know I know they've been with it, so, I mean, so what's the culture like, and what um, you know, some of those things that that you've seen since you've been there? Man, it uh, it is just um, so incredibly blessed. Uh, this culture is really the big sell of uh, a position like this because it's the culture that's led to so many championships and winning because you know it's a positive. Uh, Christian environment. You know, I'm coaching kids with a 4.2 GPA uh, who are going to go on and be engineers and, and things like that. You know, but uh, you know, the, the kids uh, want to be pushed, they want to be challenged, they want to be uh, held accountable, they want to be disciplined. Uh, they all told me that from, that from day one when I got hired. Uh, the culture, the parents, the booster club is so supportive. Just today, they were. Uh, bringing us peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and I had uh, you know parents bringing us protein and creatine and chocolate milk and um, you know really taking care of these kids so uh, it's it's a real blessing we've got all the support you can possibly ask for and it just makes you that much more excited to go to work you know I get up every morning about four o'clock and I just kick the door down I can't wait to get to work you know it's uh, it's, it's a true blessing to, to uh, be here um, wearing the red, white, and blue, uh, representing the Knights. Well, yeah, I know they definitely got a, a, a nice field set up. I know I've been there. I mean, you walk in, and you almost got like a tailgating section underneath the pavilion right there. So I know the atmosphere is always going like that. You know? And it's a nice place to play. I can't lie about that. So uh, tell me, what, what were some of the things that, you know, that actually brought you there? I know you was at the home, and you know, what were some of the things that actually said, okay, yeah, this is the place I know I want to be? Well, just the name, uh, Lafayette Christian Academy. And that's always uh, been my ultimate destination, my ultimate goal. I've always wanted to be a head coach. So I was blessed in 2020 to get my first opportunity at Patterson. And I learned a lot at Patterson. We, uh, My second year there, we 
went seven and three and hosted a playoff game. Uh, we had several kids sign scholarships, sign Division One scholarships. So I had great athletes there, you know. But the public school setting, the challenges that you have, uh, you know, in St. Mary Parish. Uh, I was the athletic director. You know, I have to uh, do everything with the grass and do everything with athletics. It was just a lot of hard work driving long distance. Um, so the upgrade to go to uh, Road Bridge over the past two years, that was a huge step up. Um, you know, we had success. We made it to the quarterfinals my first year. Um, you know, we lost in the second round this past year. Had more kids sign uh, college scholarships. Uh, really had um, great kids and great people at both of those uh, places. But I'm a Christian and you know, the, the ability to speak Christ in a public setting is something that is, is extremely important to me and my family. Uh, my priorities at this point in my life, I'm 40 now, is faith, family, and football. So, um, you know, now I get to be in a place where uh, we pray with the kids before and after every workout. The kids will lead prayer. You know, we're a close family uh, knit team that prays for each other. Um, you know, but it's also one of the premier uh, academies in the state where. Uh, you know, these kids are getting uh, millions and millions of dollars of uh, scholarships offered to them, uh, uh, you know, every year. And just the statistics of, you know, graduation rate, ACT score, um, uh, on and on and on. Uh, the, the, the kid there is more like coaching a kid at the college level. I've coached at the college level for 10 of my uh, 19 years I've been coaching now. Uh, so it's more like when you're at a private school, at a Christian academy, that you're coaching a college kid. You know, they got to pay their own money to get in, so they've got to have be in a dress code that, uh, you know, they they have high goals. To whereas when you're sometimes at a, a public school setting, the, the, the typical PE kid, you know, be a rock in your shoe every day because he don't care nothing about what you have to say. He just wants to get out of there as fast as he can. So it's an absolute blessing to be in an environment. And I'll also add that, you know, the coaches that I have now are inspiring. The people that I'm around uh, constantly have, have played in the NFL, have played at the college level, uh, and have just really... Um, you know, sharp football mind. So I'm learning. I'm a lifelong learner in this sport, and uh, I'm excited to get to work today uh, and work, get to work every day to learn from all the people around me. I was going to ask too, and you uh, kind of hit on uh, Did you bring in coaches, or you kind of kept the coaches that was there? Uh, you know, how was the Yeah, uh, little uh, bit of both. Uh, I was really lucky that they had some tremendous, uh, some of the best coaches in the state already on staff. So uh, I'll start with uh, Coach Chop, who I mentioned earlier, Matt Standiford. He's our assistant head coach. Uh, he really oversees the offense and the offensive line. Uh, he's the uh, middle school athletic director. Uh, you know, he's so connected and has been around there so long and knows the game of football, knows the history of LCA. And, knows the schemes that have been uh, leading up to here. So I rely on him on a daily basis to, uh, to help this transition be smooth and help us uh, run full speed through this tradition, uh, uh, you know, transition uh, instead of stopping to grab the baton and starting again. We're full speed, grab it and go uh, with him. Um, uh, Mitch Kraft is my defensive coordinator and uh, head strength coach, and he's somebody that, um, you know, uh, there's dozens of schools uh, that uh, would have loved to have him on their staff. Uh, the kids will run through a brick wall for him, and he uh, has our defense. Uh, I think they broke, like, uh, 15 records or something like that, 17 records defensively um, at the school last year. Um, so he really brings uh, what I want, that grit on defense that, uh, you know, they're going to challenge you for every inch and fight and claw and scratch, uh, uh, and you're going to have to fight to, to get anything on them. And also uh, Drew Bajeron. Drew Bajeron is a guy that uh, is our uh, is head special teams coordinator as well as uh, defensive backs uh, coach. He works with our, our corners and safeties as well. Um, and he's just one of the sharpest minds. He worked at uh, UL. Mitch Kraft played at Southern Miss. Matt Standiford played at Louisiana Christian University. So all guys who uh, you know have college experience. 
Yeah, and I was able to bring uh, some guys with me as well. I brought Tyrell Fenroy, who uh, you know is a legend in the state of Louisiana. You know, he, uh, he's in the Hall of Fame uh, for the uh, Raging Cajuns. Mr. 4,000 rushed for 4,000 yards. He was my offensive coordinator and uh, offensive play caller the past two years at Bro Bridge, and he'll have the same type of role uh, over um, at LCA. And we're uh, extremely blessed to have him with his you know, wealth of knowledge he brings from playing in the NFL to being one of the best uh, running backs in um, uh, in Louisiana uh, Rage of Cajun's history. Uh, Trevins Pat was a guy that I coached when I was a grad assistant at UL. He was one of the best uh, players we had on our four-year New Orleans Bowl run and conference championship uh, Sunbelt win in uh, 2013. Uh, he, he was a safety on all of those teams, a team leader. He was my DB's coach at, uh, at Bro Bridge, and now he's going to assume the same uh, role at LCA uh, with us. So um, uh, just to name a few, you know, and we've, we've got a, a lot more tremendous uh, CECP coaches and, and faculty coaches that are working hard every day, uh, really busting their butt, and uh, we're blessed to have them. We definitely know that as a head coach, man, you need all of those people. You need the support from the from the from the admin and teachers and your obviously your coaching, man. So that's good that you have those guys lined up. Last question, man, tell us about I know all games are the big game, but is there any one or two that's circled on that schedule that you say, okay, man, this one's probably gonna pack out, everybody gonna be at this one, it's gonna be the one to you know, it's the one to see if we had to pick one or two to, for us to come to and okay, grit it. That's for us. It's the next one, and uh, so right now it's Archbishop Rummel, September sixth. Oh, yeah, uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and I got a history with them. Uh, oh yeah, yep. And um, it's actually um, at uh, the Zephyrs Field, so it's going to be the Canes Classic. It's a 5 p.m. kickoff. Yeah, um, it's going to be a Canes Classic at 5 p.m. in the Zephyrs Field, uh, and um, right after us, John Curtis is hosting uh, an out-of-state team, so it's going to. Be be uh, an awesome event uh, there. I, when I was the defensive coordinator at Brother Martin, uh, we, we only lost three games, but two of them were to Rummel in 2019, so I definitely have that one circled, a little bullseye on that one. But you ask me any week, you know, what, which one's the big game, and it's yeah. going to be the next one. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Same thing. You're going to tell the player, the, the, the next important player, the next one. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's man, it. Coach, man, any other shout-outs you want to give um, to anybody else, that, you know, Absolutely. I, I want to just first and foremost uh, thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, without Him, none of this would be possible. And I also want to thank my family, my wife Christy, uh, my, my kids Krista, Landon, and Hannah, my parents, Dennis and Marinelle, and all of our family. I want to thank you and I love y'all. Thank you, Coach. Man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. you guys throughout the season on the district and y'all roll to the dome. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Hey, we'll be here with Green Football. Stay locked in.